Well, we are here with uh, Conrad for a short commentary on the uh, very recent knife or sword attack that has just occurred in Trollhättan in Sweden. We uh, most likely have pinned down the suspect to Anton Lundin Pettersson. He is Swedish, white. Media was very quick to point this out. He's about 20, 21 years old. He uh, lived in Trollhättan and he uh, has allegedly walked into a school uh, called Kronan and stabbed people. Yeah. At the school. It seems he dressed up in some kind of a costume, a, a, a mask, maybe some Darth Vader mask or something, a robe and uh, a sword, allegedly. He uh, even took a photo or someone took a photo with, of him with two other students at the school. We don't know why, but allegedly they thought it had something to do with uh, Halloween or something, mm -hmm. that this was some kind of dress up or some kind of costume thing. Uh, despite that we're not that uh, b big on Halloween in Sweden. He most likely had a sword, but we don't know. It could have been a, some kind of other instrument that he used to uh, stab people with. So far, one teacher, uh, an assistant teacher, uh, has died, and also one of the students. I believe a third one is uh, in the hospital right now in critical condition, uh, at least according to the uh, you know, latest uh, mm -hmm. reports. And the attacker was, was shot and killed by the police. That's that's right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So he was killed, which is quite rare. I I, I don't, I haven't yeah, really seen, seen that the cops have, have done stuff like that before, mm -hmm. to be honest. Uh, Swedish police very seldom fire their weapons. Very seldom. Yeah. Uh, but as you said, we, we don't know much, but but the interesting here is, uh, as, as interesting as the attack obviously is, uh, the reactions are also quite interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, you obviously want to compare this with the murders on IKEA a yes. few months ago. And for me, the most obvious difference is our Prime Minister Stefan Löfven has yet to this day, to my knowledge, not said a word about the IKEA murders. Although when he heard about this, he dropped everything and jumped on a flight and, uh, and arrived at this school with, with a bunch of flowers, just we're talking hours afterwards. And this is, uh, well, it's blatantly obvious that uh, his reactions are very different. And, and, and we don't know if this depends on, on, I mean, it could be because it was a school, but, well, you, you kind of think that this was a white attacker. Uh, and in the Kia murder, it was, was, uh, was a black attacker. Yeah. That's the most obvious yeah. difference. I, I don't know if that's the thing. I mean, uh, to be honest, that, that's the only, only reason I can think. That he wants to you know cool people down and show that he's this great multicultural uh, leader who just uh, oh this is awful and we have to stop the the hatred yada yada the, the same stuff. I mean obviously this this is a, it's not a good idea to go into a school and start uh, shopping people up with swords. But I mean it's also not very good to just kill a mother and her kid in in IKEA just because you want to stay in Sweden. No, we have not gotten the same level of. Uh uh, you know, d denouncing that IKEA murder as we've seen so far oh. in this event, and and you oh, know, no. everyone is jumping on this. And and as you said, Stefan Levin, our prime minister, he hasn't even said a word about that yet. No. Nothing. Nothing. After the IKEA murders, if you went into to some of the biggest newspapers homepage, uh, you saw not the headline was not two people slaughtered at IKEA. No, no, the headline was Sweden. It's much safer than you think. Yeah, deadly just, violence just, is, is relax, declining. Relax, take yeah. it easy. Nothing's it's, going on. It's all fine. It's, Go back it's to sleep. Sickening. One of the things here, obviously, with the uh, kid here that did it, this is about what 20, 21 years yeah, old. Yeah, probably twenty. Um, and we uh, again, we don't know his motives. There, there are a couple of links that has happened or occurred here so far uh, to his to to his alleged Facebook account and also to his YouTube account. But again, we 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 simply don't know. But there are a couple of things in there. I guess some kind of connection to like national socialism through like an an eagle, you know, on his back, yeah, yeah, the yeah. back of his the the banner page or uh, the banner image on his Facebook channel, uh, mm -hmm. and also on YouTube he kind of liked videos that was a little bit more critical of immigration. Some of the commentary yeah, that's a few, out there, but yeah, not very much. Uh, not too and much. He had some, no. Yeah, but it, yeah, and and the. Um, he seemed to have some kind of interest in Second World War. He had some movies mm -hmm. about I mean, German tanks, but that's that's nothing. But but the media, obviously, oh, he's a right-wing extremist. And especially Expo, um, a Swedish very left, uh, they call themselves the anti-racist experts. They jumped on the wagon real quickly and, oh, we did a research and we shown that he was uh, he was an, uh, like, you know, yeah, well, a uh, right-wing extremist, obviously. And there's no proof of that at all. No. Well, it's funny because uh, people might might not know this. the The guy who wrote the uh, 
the girl with the dragon tattoo. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Stig Larsson. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't know why those movies like went all over the world. They even redid them in English, for Christ's sake. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. He's the guy who basically is the uh, the brainchild of of Expo. Yeah, the founder. And mm-hmm. and it's funny because these movies are li- <laughs> they're, they're literally <laughs> like a reversal of everything that's happening in Sweden right now. They're like they try to prove that there's somehow some kind of you know secret Nazi network. Like so, you know, Swedish Swedish men are just like full of Nazis. They're just like waiting to take advantage of these minority feminist women in Sweden. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. You know. So it just yeah. it's it just lies. It's lies and propaganda, and it's utter garbage. So you know, one of the things we can say about this is that we we don't you know the links to these channels hasn't been confirmed, so we don't know. We'll see if that turns out to be true or not. So it's very mm-hmm. difficult at this stage. And uh, neither has the identity of uh, this Anton guy. We we're not sure. Uh, right. Everything points to this guy, but but things might change. You, you never know. And and obviously one of the things we have to question is is why. Why does something like this occur? What, why, what is it that spawns something like this? I mean, I, I've lived in Trollhättan for uh, for a few years, and and it's, I mean, central centrally in Trollhättan, it's it's like wall to wall non suites basically. It's it's. I mean, look at some of the photos from this event where you see the outside of the school, Kronan. You see the um, ambu- ambulance personnel. You see the p- cops, the police, uh, mm-hmm. some of the other people that are there to do some of the investigations and whatnot. Those are literally the only Swedes in these pictures. Yeah, you know he lived um, kind of yeah more or less centrally downtown. The kid, uh, mm-hmm. and I wonder what kind of experiences he had. I wonder what kind of uh, situation that he grew up in. I mean, people yeah. don't know this, but I mean, a lot of the Swedes, Swedish kids, Swedish children, there are they are now minorities in some of these areas. They are yeah, the extreme minority. Yeah, they're like the only, you know, among a handful of Swedes going to some of these schools now. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, I, I wonder what his experiences were like, to be honest. Yeah, me too. And I mean, you can fantasize about him just being, you know, bullied, bullied for being a Swede. Uh, you fucking Swede. I mean, because lots of immigrants think that Swedes hate them, so they try to hate them back. Well, and that's, also, that's the image you get in the media. That's the thing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, and, and I mean, Swedish kids are generally really, you know, soft and, and kind, and uh, that's the way we're raised here in Sweden, which is the opposite of many of these Muslim kids, for example. So, I mean, one theory is that this this guy just he just snapped in the the real sense of the world. He was maybe he was bullied. Maybe he you know uh, read about Sweden. You know, I know what's about to happen to Sweden, and then he just picked up a sword and went to school and, and started stabbing people. I yeah. mean, that's one theory. Yeah, we don't know if this is his uh, previous school. We don't know if he, he actually went to the school or not. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, th- there's a real chance that he might have been mistreated. But, you know, again, that's speculation. We, 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 simply, we simply don't know. But the fact is that it, it's funny how, you know, the media jump on these opportunities to, of course, uh, you know, blame the, what the Sweden Democrats, I guess, ultimately, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. that somehow they are responsible for all this. But they... They, it's funny how they never self-analyze and like look at these things from a lar- larger perspective and, and mm. question or even go to the research of what has been done already on multicultural societies that uh, trust plummets, uh, crime goes up, uh, mm. there, there's, there's uh, tension between people. Uh, and, and literally, we have a situation where we've created these kinds of conditions for ourselves, but there's no self-reflection. See, the, the proper response would be you as a Swedish person uh, you just basically go away, lay down and die and just go away. And, and that will be the solution to the problem. Yeah, you know, yeah. just don't don't cause any ruckus. Don't try to speak up against this or say something about what is happening to your country. Yeah, that's true. And that's, that's a question they never ask. Why? Well, they, they, they don't. They, they ask and answer at the same time. Oh, it's racism or it's right extremism or it's, it's uh, the Swedish Democrats fault. Uh, but I mean, what could what could pu- push? I mean, a twenty year old guy. The story is kind of bizarre. He, as you said, he was wearing some kind of mask or a gas mask, and he had, he had a military helmet on, and he had some kind of cape, and he brought a sword. He's larping, I mean, literally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really, yeah. really weird. And and I mean, obviously, it's 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 uh, awful that he died, but it's also. Uh, but we will we'll never find the true motives. I mean, we can we will well, we're speculating now, but we're gonna have to keep speculating because there's, we'll, there's we'll no never manif- know for true. There's no manifesto or anything like that. No, no, not that that we know of. And again, if this was some kind of a political act, I mean, it's a really weird way to do it. If you want to sure. kill as many immigrants as possible, then you don't do it like this. You don't dress up like this. You know, you get all the attention. Uh, so. I hopefully we'll get some kind of answer uh, soon, but but I don't know. Well, he we'll might just have snapped, as you said. It might just be yeah. be cuckoo. It might just be another mental 
uh, thing. It might have turned out that he has nothing against uh, immigrants. He didn't even mm -hmm. think about those kinds of things. No. He just had some mental issues, and he walked into the first, you know, whatever public uh, uh, facility he could find, and this is what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. We we just don't mm -hmm. know. But so see, this is the this is what we're trying to point out here: the irresponsible behavior of the media of just running with with a lot of these rumors initially without we, without actually anything of this have been confirmed. Mm -hmm. And they love this. I mean, this is the thing they've been waiting for. And I'm surprised that this kind of things doesn't happen more often. Actually, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Why, why do not people snap? I mean, we've seen some. Uh, some buildings now being torched that were going to be be uh, refugee uh, hotels or, or asylum whatever homes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. asylum homes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's well, that's not people snapping. That's actually a kind of way to. I mean, uh, our politicians won't listen to us. We talked about this before. So people torch the houses. But, but I mean, every day I think, well, today somebody's going to snap, and then we're going to see you know the, the 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 marches against racism and the demands that the Swedish Democrats should be be um, you know illegal. But but I guess the the Swedish people they they we can take almost anything obviously mm -hmm. people won't snap well now one guy snapped and we had Breivik if you want to call that snapping but but other than that we have like almost zero this kind of uh, if you want to call it terrorist events which is really it's really strange to be honest yeah it is strange I, I agree with you and obviously we got to point out the fact that this uh, it, yes it is something that's going to be used by the um, uh, the apparatus, the state government apparatus in Sweden, um, you, you know, who knows what's next, right? It's metal detectors on these schools and surveillance and, you know, everything else. So it's very beneficial. They always jump on these opportunities. We, we understand that, you know, but at the same time, okay, is the same response is going to happen in these IKEA stores? You know, I no, just, no. I don't think so. Obviously not. And we're talking about torching buildings. I mean, our suburbs, the, it's burn, burn, burn cars every day almost. And yeah. People don't talk about it. Well, they talk about it and, and they ask why. And then they say, oh, these are troubled kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to pour money board. into that hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. have no, no iPhones. Crazy. Which you would never, I mean, you will never hear that kind of explain, <clears throat> explanation about this guy. Oh, he was bullied or maybe he was poor, he had problems at home. No, we'll probably only hear, oh, he was racist because he had some kind of eagle on his Facebook page or, or he liked this and that video. Yeah. And people, I think, and that's it. People will just, oh, okay, just, just another Nazi. Because there was actually this kind of interesting, there was an, um, they asked people in Sweden, what are you most afraid of? And they have this and this and this. And I think on second place, people in Sweden were afraid of Nazis. <laughs> That's the <laughs> second biggest fear of Sweden. <laughs> and we have, uh, I mean, how many Nazis uh, do we boy. have in Sweden? Yeah. Like five? No, 50, but the, the, the girl 100. with the dragon tattoo proves it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I mean, f fear of, you know, increased um, immigration was like number five or six or something on this list. Which, oh, which boy. Is just, I mean, it's just crazy. And so this the, is the media. The, I mean, they talk about Nazis all the time. <laughs> they're more afraid that the Wehrmacht and the SS is going to storm yeah, into Sweden yeah. than the invasion that's actually happening, happening right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is not even, I mean, in the 80s, 90s, <sighs> we had a few skinheads, if you want to call them Nazis, but we don't have any skinheads anymore. No. We don't have anything like that. No, no. So, I mean, yeah, so the media is, is uh, well, they're, they're, they're spreading a, a picture of Sweden that do not, I mean, it doesn't exist. It's just a fairy tale. It's just, it, it's nothing, it's nothing. No. Well, you know, he might have been um, called Svenne, which is like a de derogatory word for, for a Swede multiple mm -hmm. times. He might have been pushed, uh, you know, to the, to the brink of his uh, abilities to cope with this. Who knows? Yeah. We just don't know. But the, the bottom line is that there's plenty of... Uh, you know, people that are mistreated when they are minorities in these schools. Hor I mean, horribly mistreated. And what's what's worse about it that there isn't this infrastructure of like support uh, that is that stands for the opposite side here. If if mm -hmm. something like ever this like this would ever occur, there is mm -hmm. a whole you know mechanism and whole apparatus in place that's there to like you know find and detect you know racism against you know so-called minorities in Sweden I mean Swedes are a minority in the world so let's just get yeah. that straight first but nonetheless there, there are minorities so far in our countries mm -hmm. so there, there's nothing there to like no one would believe him if he said this I can imagine no one would well you no. know whatever that doesn't exist that's you know I've heard these myths about reverse racism but they don't really exist I mean that's no. literally really the, the response here yeah, yeah, and that must be yeah. And just imagine, even more awful. You're getting bullied by people, and if you tell someone, they might call you. Well, isn't that a little racist? I mean, obviously you, you would snap. And I'm so happy that I'm not a teenager right now, living in some of these suburbs or yeah. almost oh, yeah. every school. I mean, there might be some only Swede school left, but that's almost only for the rich people. 
but most kids today they grew up in a very very multicultural school but we're a multicultural society and i think that's and just what, awful yeah and what that means is it, it's an anti-swedish environment that's what it ultimately yeah. is i mean that's a common mm. denominator we can all uh we can all hate on the swedes together you told me about something i didn't even know that but you told me about basically the these the the concept of these fines now that they, they, they yeah, some yeah, of the kids yeah. gets gets fined they have to pay money yeah pay money every day for for some just made up uh, crime hey you looked at my sister or uh, hey, did you beat my brother or hey, you took my mobile phone or whatever and then you pay a small amount every day and that's a way to not get beaten down and and i mean just imagine just being a kid 12 13 years old or 8 or 7 i mean this will fuck you up for life i can imagine and then on top of it, always being told, "Don't be racist, don't be racist." Oh, poor these people. Uh, don't. No, no, they're you know they seem war or whatever. I mean, there's always always these explanations that that uh, that 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 people can behave like like assholes. I mean, you never ever demand something from these people. If a Swede would try to berta, as you would say in Sweden, the, find, if a Swede would, would, yeah, yeah. Mm. Obviously, the parents or the school or the society would react. Hey, what are you doing? Stop that. Mm. But no, no, nothing happens. In, no, I think it was in difference. 2014. Um, over 3,000 of these uh, immigrant, you know, lone lone children, you know, immigrants, mm-hmm. migrants c- came to uh, came to Trollhättan. Uh, yeah. Of course, they call them children, but they're really some of them have beards and they're balding, and you know, uh, <laughs> <They are laughs> so you know, we know that that's not the case. But the fact is that that there's so many now that are coming into some of these areas that you you know you mentioned that. Uh, that despair of basically being stuck in one of these areas or suburbs somewhere yeah. and basically don't have the money or the finances to to get out. And some of these people might be literally, they're, they're picked on every single day. Yeah, you can't, can't, walk, can't walk out, I, I imagine, at night. I mean, and also there's lots of, lots of uh, reports about, you know, dogs being killed, kittens being, you know, tortured to death. And I don't think it's Swedes who do that. So Swedes are kind of, you know, mushy and we like our animals. And I mean, especially dogs are hated by many Muslims because it's a you know, dirty animal. Filthy animal, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've so, seen... can't even have pets. Did, did you see that about the cat being, like, uh, beheaded? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I heard, you know, other awful things. You know, cats being taped together and they have the eyes gouged out and they put things up there. You know, just this, the most barbaric thing you can Disgusting. think. People, you know, playing football with kittens. Yeah. And I mean, this this is not our kind of people. I mean, I can hardly understand that. How could you play soccer with a kitten until it dies? I mean, that's for me, that's not being human. That's really close to being an animal yourself. Mm-hmm. Well, it's worse than that. It's hardly any other, other animals that does like that, you know? No, 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 no. Torture just for fun. It's a completely different, you know, mentality that, that is clashing with ours. As you said, most, pe- most Swedes are very, they're very calm. They're very nice. They're, they're too nice. They are... Yeah. Uh, they're not accustomed to this kind of violence. Uh, they're not accustomed mm. to how to deal with that. The, the the conditions have been so, so you know, secure and padded and protected that when this comes in, it's like a, a, a total shock. But obviously, this is changing for a lot of these younger kids now. I I yeah. can't even, I can't even imagine how it is for some some young Swedes to grow up these days. No, and hopefully they'll get you know tough instead. Instead of just bugging out and, and just giving up, they have to be tough. Uh, so maybe maybe it's, this is a generation we can count on. You know, a generation who 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 have seen some you know real difficulties that will you know harden you and make you more you know um, prepared to act. Maybe you have to learn to stand up for these I mean, against these bullies. Uh, that would be a great thing. But but again, the, the Swedish mentality is no, you don't fight, you don't stand up to people. You try to discuss and you know have a conversation and sit down. And I don't think that's a language that works against uh, against the immigration bullies. No, that's true. You know, ultimately, I think it's very sad that um, people die. The lack of recognition that that this is what happens in multi-ethnic, multicultural uh, societies where where this has been forced, where there isn't any options left anymore. And mm-hmm. and what I hate the most is the fact that there is no responsibility from from government or from media to recognize that this is a completely you know, manufactured situation that, that basically shouldn't shouldn't happen. And these people are willing to sacrifice generations of of yeah. young Swedes just to push this, you know, weird, perverted utopia and dream of theirs of, of some kind of multi ethnic societies. But I mean it has to be said, what about what about all the rapes in Sweden? When is yeah. the prime minister gonna you, you know, just because it's not someone who you know, immediately dies overnight like this, but that happens too though, of course. People are, you know, young Swedish uh uh, women, uh, girls are murdered, like uh, mm-hmm. Elin Krantz, for example, yeah, yeah. very famous case. 
and there are many others like that. But the fact is that there's no one saying anything about those things. There's no one no. openly, de you know, denouncing those kinds of events and speaking about it. They're more afraid of if something like this occurs, like when the IKEA murders occurred. They're more afraid of, oh, how is this going to be used, right? It even yeah. even like relatives to those who have been murdered have have gone yeah. out to the yeah. media and said, oh, I certainly hope that no, you know, right wing, you know, maniac is going to use this for their yeah. own purposes. I mean, it's. Yeah, yeah, I mean, God. that's a sickness, isn't it? I mean, that's not that's a normal. That's a, some kind of mental sickness. I mean, I don't know if you heard about this o oikophobia, uh, the hatred for for your own. Uh, mm -hmm. you, yeah. I think it's it's yeah. uh, from the beginning. It's that you hate your own home, as as in your house. But but uh, nowadays, it's more used. Is that you hate you hate Sweden. You hate yourself. You hate Sweden. You hate the Swedish culture, and 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 you're. I mean, you're willing to hate it so much that that you're almost uh, well, you almost protect the one who are destroying it. I mean, if if you if you have an immigrant killing a uh, killing like Elin Kranz, you almost want to defend the killer. Mm -hmm. oh, let's not uh, let's not think like this. Let's not think that. Like I mean, th yeah. I mean, there's a point though. It's real, really simple. Just oh, yes, it's just because he's an immigrant. An immigrant always kill white girls. I mean, the truth isn't that simple. But but you can't go the other way either to the extreme and say no, it's just nothing to do with him being an immigrant or nothing to do with him being a Muslim or nothing to do with her being a girl, mm -hmm. uh, a white girl, because. There is somewhere in between her. There, there, there's the truth. And I mean, if we don't talk about it, if we, if we don't even say that this is a problem, we'll never, ever, ever solve it, obviously. That's right. It was funny, just one note. One of the, <laughs> one of the kids speaking out of the school, Idona, an immigrant, um, she, she said, uh, she said you know, that he wore a mask that he was like dressed in black and whatnot, but he said he had blue eyes, but I think there must have been contact lenses. <laughs> so, really? All right. It means how how uh, that's how un unaccustomed they are to oh, see yeah. blue eyes yeah. anymore. In there, <laughs> where yeah. they are. And also anyway, interesting yeah. that that kind of, of description of the of the attacker um, came out to the media because uh, in Sweden it's often oh yeah there was a guy and he was uh, maybe they say his height but never his skin the color of his skin or the color of his eyes or the color of his hair or nothing like that. Yeah, if he had any uh, accent, the way he spoke or. No, no, they always leave that out. Always leave that out. Um, unless it's a Swede. Unless then, it's obviously. a Swede. I mean, what people need to remember, this is basically, uh, you know, this is our Dylan Roof. Uh, this is our, yeah. you, know, you know, extremist white supremacist. I mean, it doesn't matter if that's true or not. This is just what's, this is how the media has labeled it. And this is what they'll mm -hmm. go with. And this will be another uh, reason for millions being poured into uh, anti-racist yeah. activities in Sweden, which ultimately just means anti-Swedish, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, groups and everything else. And um, yeah, I mean, what, what, what's the response to this? The response is more of this is going to happen. More of this yeah. is going to start uh, occurring. People are going to snap and it's very unfortunate and no one is taking the responsibility and questioning why this is happening. That's a damn shame in this, this whole atrocity. Yeah, things are going to go from bad to worse real quickly. I read today that Sweden is missing 35 thousand apartments and beds or whatever you want to call it. So, so we're looking at right now uh, tents for 35,000 people. And you can just imagine what, what kind of, I mean, we will have riots, as in Germany, you know, riots, rapes, prostitution, drugs, uh, everything. Just the other day we had some kind of, you know, apparently, we don't know this, but some kind of, you know, pro-ISIS, um, yeah. you know, uh, what do you graffiti. call that, like graffiti on, on outside of of this one uh, cafe, uh, a chain of cafes that's owned by this Christian Syrian guy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, convert or die. Uh, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, and I mean, more, how obvious does it have to get? Yeah. And, and, you know, there's, I think there's over 150 people uh, from Gothenburg, 150 immigrants from Sweden, uh, from Gothenburg alone, uh, mm -hmm. where this happened, that actually has gone and joined, you know, ISIS force, forces. It's like a huge holdout for, uh, you know, uh, recruiting um, people to yeah, ISIS. Mm -hmm. it's, it's unbelievable in, in some ways you know it's uh, it's hard to describe but in some way I mean it, it's it's like uh, you, you've been waiting for the collapse in so many years now and, and now it's finally here I mean the collapse has really really started so so let's get going with the collapse then I can feel that sometimes let's get going let's see let's see what happens let's have the riots let's have the you know the killings the the the, the diseases the everything and then because things have to crash and then we can start building it up again and maybe finally the crash that is inevitable is finally coming here to Sweden. So we can get, you know, then we can start it, uh, building it up again. The, the sooner the better. Do you understand what I mean? Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I think uh, one of the things that happens too here is that you have you know famous people. Even the king was out uh, speaking out about this event. As, you know, he said Sweden is in chalk. You know, and there's like all these all these you know famous politicians are out speaking out about this and saying how uh, incredibly upset they are about this. And, and I can't help. I mean, I'm not saying that this is a false flag or anything like that, but it's I can't help to question the that the. Uh, the timing of this, that the whole media yeah. apparatus is like ready to go. Everyone is there commenting. The media is there, you know, super quick. Um, mm -hmm. They just, they, let's face it, they love when this happens. They love it more than anybody. They they, they welcome it probably more than, I mean, ultimately, I don't, who knows if they even care about those who actually were killed. They're, they're happier to be able to jump on the situation as a way to finally kind of, you know, punch back at, at some of the anti-immigration sentiments that yeah. has begun to rise in Sweden right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, they love it and they need it. I mean, they need these kind of things to happen because now we'll see maybe, a, you know, a few days or a few weeks with, you know, as I said, demonstrations against racism and people, celebrities will start coming out. We have to do something about this, yada, yada, yada. And, and the, the critics against immigration, they'll have to, you know, lay low for a while. Because the, the, the situation is so tense. And every second that we can't talk the way we need to talk is, is I mean, a lost second. Because people are just pouring into Sweden. Now we're talking like yeah. tens of thousands each week. Yep. It's, and as it's I said, we, we're missing 35,000 beds. Uh, but that was maybe yesterday. Today we were missing 45,000 yeah, beds. Yeah, there's or exactly whatever. just 5,000 more, 4,000 more. Yeah. You know, it's just, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable. It doesn't, uh, I mean, it almost doesn't matter anymore if it's 5,000, 10,000, 100,000, 30,000, or zero. I mean, it's just numbers because we passed the way of the, the, the point of no return so long yeah. ago. Yeah. So, I mean, just keep coming or stop, stop them at the border, whatever. The problem's going to be the same. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing I was thinking about is it's also funny that we've seen the the rise of these kind of gang conflicts in Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, literally like AK-47s going off, hand grenades going off and all this kind of stuff and like people being killed and murdered. But like nowhere have you seen like, oh my God, we have to do something about this. How do we stop the gang? What, I mean, what I'm saying is that these are between, fa you know, rivaling immigrant groups themselves in some cases, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and they're targeting the, the police too, obviously. Sure, exactly. <laughs> but just the fact that there's like, there's not kind of denunciation from the political elite within Sweden when these kinds of things occur. No, no, no. The only reason that this has had the only reason that this kind of uh, effort and concerted effort behind this is, is occurring is because we have a Swedish boy guy doing it towards immigrants. And that yeah. let's face it, that's the only, only reason. Of course, because if this was an immigrant, I'm sure people would start talking about, well, oh, this was racism. But I mean, the racism against the attacker, maybe he was, you know, oh, well, and, and, and yeah, yeah, but in this case, maybe he was, but not that kind of racism, because he said he was a Muslim, maybe, then people would, would start talking about, well, Muslims, they don't get any jobs. And maybe it's the Sweden, Sweden people's fault. And uh, oh, yeah, maybe, yeah, whatever, whatever. Exactly. We have to take uh, the responsibility we'll for this, basically. Yeah. It's, in some way, it's our fault. But in this case, it's not our fault. It's not the politicians' fault. It's not the policy's fault. This is now uh, not even the individual's fault. This is the yeah. entire fault of every video that he ever watched on on YouTube. Th those people are to blame, you know. Yeah, Jimmy yeah. Åkesson, on the the uh, leader of the Sweden Democrats. He's mm -hmm. to blame, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the the golden Maybe one, Marcus Fulin. Yeah, well, yeah. exactly. It's it's just a matter of uh, the fact that they can they can they can associate anybody they want to with these kinds of events to try to. Uh, discredit them and to, to yeah. try to say that, well, speaking about these kinds of things, that's what breeds the violence and that's really what's dangerous here. Yeah, yeah. And people are still trying to blame Sverigedemokraterna, uh, Swedish Democrats, for Breivik. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and, and that's, I mean, it's, so, it's so insincere. I mean, even, even if you. Even if, even if you really think that it, this was the Swedish Democrats' fault, you, you can't just say it. You have to, you know, have some kind of argument about it. I mean, uh, this is the Swedish Democrats' fault because, and then you have to, you know, tell me why so I can understand it. But but you don't even have to do that. You just say, well, it's Jimmy Åkesson, and people will go, yeah, obviously, something with Hitler. <laughs> and people just buy it. Oh, yeah, 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 of course, of course. I mean, the, the, the civil war, it's, uh, it's, it's coming somehow. It's, I mean, be it's because here. you can just yeah. see every day we have two groups in Sweden. We have the one who oppose immigration and we have the one who love it. And that's it. There's no, there's no in between. Either no. you want open borders and everyone come here or you're a Nazi. I mean, that's the only, only two kinds of people there are in Sweden. Yeah, that's the only question that remains. The infrastructure can collapse. Uh, yeah. There might not be enough food coming in the stores. There's no preparation if something happens. Everything else just like 
falls to the side of this one fundamental question, which which ultimately is about will the Swedish people survive? Will they be here in like two hundred years, or will they not? That's that's what the question comes down to, really. Question. Yeah, but uh, we'll make this, Henrik, somehow. We'll come out on top. I'm pretty we sure, to. but but it's gonna um, it's gonna take some doing. I can tell you. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, we have to change as as a people and as a society and as 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 human beings. Um, and I don't really want to do that. I want to be, you know, I would like to keep being a mushy Swede who thinks good about everyone and uh, likes kittens. But but sorry, the time is over. You know, one of the last things I wanted to comment on here. The <laughs> it was funny. The uh, the hockey, the Swedish hockey union, <laughs> actually came out with a tweet. Where they link to the story of what we're talking about here, and the uh, the uh, the text they had with it is the you know oh the naive Sweden kind of thing you know the, the, the hockey union yeah the Swedish hockey union uh, I didn't even know they existed three, three kronos, uh, officiella, oh, oh uh, Twitter yeah. oh, account basically mm-hmm. our national hockey team's official Twitter account mm-hmm. uh, right. and basically then impl- I mean they didn't even imply what it what it really means but they, of course they thought oh my God somehow how naive Sweden is to think that they could go away, uh, you know, that they can um, do what they're doing now without having any consequences. That's obviously kind of implied in the tweet, but basically it was like, there's an investigation now, and oh my God, it turns out like the, about a handful of people have access to this account, so now they have to find have to find who yeah, said this to like, cl- you know, clamp down on them and, and boot them out, basically. You know, so you can't have any, you can't have any dissenting opinions even within no, no, something no. which is like no, no. not even related politically to any of this you know no 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 and and people get fired i mean for for did you hear about the about the the <laughs> this is crazy did you hear about the it was some kind of uh, i think it was a sports comment commentator on on tv or he was some sports related guy uh pretty pretty famous and he took a picture of himself by an old Finnish uh, airplane, a warplane, and you know they have the swastika mm. back then. Oh yeah, of course. He was fired. <laughs> Goodbye. Every that- historian knows that. Yeah, they had swastikas, but they weren't Nazis. Everybody who no. went to school no. knows this, yeah. but nobody cares. It doesn't oh, matter. A swastika, it doesn't and you matter. stood by it, yeah. and you're out of here. Yeah. And he didn't even protest because I guess. Oh man, I forgot what country I was in. <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> well, so, I mean, you know, this yeah. is this is what this is what happens. It, it's like you can't. Um, you can't even look at it from an objective point of view and, and discuss it as a historical event. I mean, you have to have, I mean, I'm surprised that even historians themselves can even like make documentaries and show it on screen uh, mm-hmm. anymore uh, because it's such so stigmatized. But, you know, mm-hmm. there you go. That's the that's the environment we've created for ourselves, isn't it? Yeah. But I guess the good news is that this, this uh, it's like, you know, watching a snake eating itself. Uh, this, this, this can, it can't last. I mean, it's impossible. It's just a question of time. So this crazy sick and system and this crazy and sick society, it will just collapse on itself. And, and that's, I mean, that's a good thing. It, too bad that it had to happen, but it has to happen and now it's going to happen. And I mean, that's a positive thing.